Hello and welcome everybody to the Bomberman Sorcerer Beginner Guide. This build features great damage over time in a huge AoE via Blackwater Cocktail, as well as insane burst damage in a smaller AoE via Grenado from the Demolitionist Tree, combined with great defensive and utilitarian skills from the Arcanist Tree, such as Baven's Fear of Protection, Nullification, and Mirror of Reroctis, and Queen Reduction from Star Pact. It is, in my opinion, one of the smoothest and best leveling builds in the game, and can transition nicely into endgame builds like Uzun Canister Bomb Sorcerer, with which I had my first kill on the Crate Celestial Boss or the Pyron Set Sorcerer, focusing on Mortar Trap and Devastation. Non set variants around Adversary or Cinder Core, as well as builds focusing more on the Fire Catalyst Tempest or Fire Aether Ray, can also work nicely. Now, as with all of these guides, I'm not going to point out all the generic leveling steps that apply to any build in detail here. You can check out my Grim Dawn beginner leveling guide for that instead. This guide will only focus on everything that's more specific to the build itself, so skill point, attribute point and devotion point allocation, as well as which factions to choose and which items to target for. Don't forget to expand the description below to check out the Grim Tools links. These links contain information on gear, skills, attributes and devotions, so it's really all in there. So at the start of the game, since Blackwater Cocktail is not a level 1 skill in the mastery of Demolitionist, but rather a level 5 skill, you need to get to level 3 first before being able to use this ability. So what you wanna do is you just wanna like, you know, get Francis' gun or have a sword and smack a couple of monsters with those items until you get to level 3. At level 3 you wanna start putting points in the cocktail. I would advise you to put like one or two points per level into the cocktail and one or two points into the mastery bar at the bottom per level. You repeat this until you get to 10 points in the mastery bar of Demolitionist and then you grab the high potency transmitter for the Blackwater Cocktail. This puts Blackwater Cocktail on a cooldown but will increase its damage and AoE by a very very large amount and from now on you basically just like throw the cocktail to create an AoE where you want to like have all your enemies walk into and they generally just all will die. Now this works perfectly well against pretty much anything in the game except for the beefiest bosses. To compensate a bit for a single target, you want to use a Searing Ember and spam fireballs in between. Next you want to get one pointers into Vindictive Flame and Flame Touched, while after that progressing the Demolitionist Bar down to 20 points to get a one pointer in Temper and 12 points into Demon Fire. Demon Fire will give you additional Chaos damage on the Blackwater Cocktail, and also give you a damage reduction debuff on enemies, which will be, well, more important later on than right now, but it's still nice to have. Once you have rescued the smith, you want to craft flint core bolts, which goes into your offhand or ranged weapon, and this grants you the greater fireball ability, which will be your spam between cooldowns of Blackwater Cocktail ability that you can use for additional single target damage. For devotions, you want to go for the jackal devotion first, for total speed, then next for the Spider Devotion for Green Affinity and Casting Speed, and then after that you want to work on the Solaris Witchfire Devotion, which will eventually grant you resistance reduction to fire and chaos. Now in Act 1 there really isn't any specific gear you want to look out for on a Demolitionist, just use whatever you find, try to focus on resistances, percent fire damage, and possibly some energy regeneration. And when it comes to your attributes, you want to put some points in physique and some points in spirit. Ideally, you don't want to put any points in cunning ever on this build. You want to fix your offensive ability in different ways. And a sorcerer will have tons of offensive ability from both the Demolitionist tree and especially from the Arcanist tree anyway. What I would advise you to do for leveling is to put a 3 to 0 to 1 ratio between physique, cunning and spirit. And then later on you can respect your attributes and put even more points in spirit compared to physique and cunning. After Act 1, don't forget to, before you proceed, craft components for your gear and use a component in every single slot. And also after that, talk to the Emissary and go to the Forgotten Gods area real quick, do the first quest there, and then choose one of the three factions depending on which movement augment you want to buy. With this additional mobility and all the components in your gear, you're gonna be ready to head into Act 2. Now the reason why you want to go to Act 2 first is because of the Zarathusadon's Archive that you can get in the Steps of Torment. So after defeating Crowley and after going through the Undercity, you can go to the Steps of Torment dungeon. You don't actually have to run the Skeleton Key part of the dungeon, you just have to fight and defeat the boss in front of the key door. 
and he can drop two different offense. He can drop the Archive, which is amazing for Wire Smite characters, and he can drop the Codex, which is amazing for the Blackwater Cocktail characters. We are looking for the one for Cocktail here, obviously, so you will have to reset your game session every time you don't get the Codex, until you get one Codex, and, well, ideally you want some additional like fire damage on this, but if you don't get it, it's not a big deal, honestly, a normal difficulty, it's whatever. You just need this item, and the affixes don't matter too much. Other items you can get from Act 1 would be Skinner's Family Torch. At the start of Act 2 you can actually decide to not rescue the Skinner family, and then you can kill him and get his torch, which actually does have some decent fire and burn damage. Um, so it's like one of the few characters where it would be kind of worth it to kill him actually and his family. I mean it comes at a moral price, but it is a decent item for this build. On top of that, of course, you can get the Bone Talisman Relic from the Act 2 quests with the Rover Elder or just craft your own relic from Devil's Crossing from the smith. From here to Logorion and the Necropolis, there's really nothing you need when it comes to items. Again, just try to get some elemental damage or fire damage or burn damage, resistances or your gear, that's kind of all that matters here for you. The one thing that I want to point out though is there is a helmet called the Flesh Warped Cask, which gives you 6% offensive and 6% defensive ability to Iskandra's Elemental Exchange. It is other than that usually a rather physical focused item, but it doesn't really matter too much. Here you just can use it for, you know, OA and DA. Also the Golos Ring from Golos in the cave below the Dimrupterian Hive is decent because it gives you plus 3 to Vindictive Flame, which gives you more total speed and regeneration. Your skill point allocation up to around level 40 should look something like this. After maxing out Blackwater Cocktail and Demon Fire, and also agonizing flames at 40 points deep into the tree, you want to also make sure to max out Flame Touched, and have Temper, Blast Shield, and the Ulzin's Wrath also one-pointed. Feel free to put up to 11 points in Vindictive Flame, because it does give you like total speed, so attack speed, casting speed, and movement speed, all of which are pretty decent on this character. How many points you put in Thermite Mine from now on is still kind of up to you. Up to 13 points are good value, even at this point in the game already, but you don't necessarily have to put that many there. You can also be kind of lazy and just put a one pointer there or not even pick them up at all yet. But for higher levels, you definitely will want to pick this one up because resistance reduction is, after all, one of the best minded players in the game. In the Arcana tree, you want to just uh, put some points in the bar and get one pointers in Inner Focus, Elemental Exchange, Overload, Mirror of Eroctis, and then you would like to max out Maven Sphere of Protection as soon as possible. Maven Sphere of Protection gives you basically percent absorption, so this will multiplicatively increase your effective HP. Arcane Will at the bottom right is also a decent one pointer, but yeah, only a one pointer. Now for the Devotions, after finishing the Solar's Witchblade, you want to get Skoros Light, the Candle Devotion, because this one will enable you to get to Magi. Magi is a really really nice um, tier 2 fire devotion, which has insane damage for a tier 2, and also a nice proc that you can put on your Thermite Mines, because Thermite Mines is gonna proc these volcanoes that can spawn from the Magi Devotions like crazy. Now, after defeating the Logorian and the Necropolis in Act 4, you do want to make sure to do all of the expansions as well in normal, just so you kind of have like already seen them at least once. Try to always look for gear that gives you bonuses to Black Weather Cocktail. So, for example, around level 56, you can see that I have already 22 points in Cocktail because of plus skills from gear, 15 points in Demon Fire, and 15 points in Agonizing Flames. Vindictive Flame has 11 points by now, and Blast Shield has 5 points. The 7 points in Temper, I believe, are all from gear, so it's only a 1 pointer actually. Um, but you can notice that I have already picked up Grenado at this point. This will help with some additional, like, single target damage. In the Arcana Tree, you can see I pushed a bit further, picked up a 1 pointer in Notification, a 1 pointer in Elemental Balance, and soft capped, like, put 12 out of 12 points in Overload or Offensive Ability. Now in Act 5, in the Ugnenborg, you have some really really nice items that you can get. You can for example get the Ugnenborg Flame Strife from one of the two witches, either Genaxia or Laria. It doesn't really matter too much if you kill Laria or not, but just that, like if you kill Laria you will have another target to farm for these Ugnenborg Flame Strife, Chill Strife and Storm Strifes. 
So this is a 33% chance usually or like around 30%-ish chance for them to drop this item for you. So again you want to just like reset the session until you get to the Ugnenborg Flamestrife. Then in this act also there's a dungeon called the Ancient Grove and the Ancient Grove is also amazing for a character like this, you definitely want to visit it. Because here you can get the Slathzar's Crest from Slathzar, and this one also adds additional fire damage to Blackwater Cocktail. And on top of that you can also get the Vilgazor's Heart from the like red running around crab called Vilgazor, and this one has plus one all skills to Demolitionist and fire damage and physical to fire conversion to Grenado. So from this point on you want to pick up Grenado and use it as a secondary nuke skill. For rings, you can grab Gargaball's ring, which also have plus 3 to Grenado, which you can get from the final boss from the Ancient Grove dungeon, as well as Living Rings, which you can either buy from the shop in Ancient Grove, or just get from any basically like plant-like creature in the entire bog. So after getting this juicy gear in Act 5, Act 6 and 7 should be kind of a cakewalk for you. Act 7 doesn't really have anything of interest for you, but at the end of Act 6 in Seeker District, you can farm the Hiram vendor to get the Configuration Blueprint for the Configuration Reddick. The Configuration Reddick is insane for Demolitionists because it gives you like plus one to all skills to Demolitionists again, fire and burn damage, and it gives you an active skill that you can use, which is kind of like a Scorching Ray ability, that you can use as a filler ability now instead of Greater Fireball. So from now on your rotation will be you throw Cocktail and Grenado whenever you can, right? Whenever they are off cooldown, you put down Thermat Mines against bosses and then you just charge your laser, your Scorching Ray from Conflagration. And whenever needed, you're gonna use Mirror for a 3 second uh, invulnerability phase and a notification to either cleanse yourself from debuffs or to cleanse buffs from enemies. When it comes to devotions around level 55-ish or like around the end of normal, you want to next up pick up the Viper Devotion and the Turtle Devotion. Viper will give you offensive ability and blue affinity and red affinity, and the Toad will also give you blue and yellow affinity and also a very nice shield that is, uh, well, like a nice circuit breaker for hardcore especially. After getting those two, you want to get the Giant Devotion, and the uh, Giant's Blood is a really, really nice heal and regeneration proc that is actually even better on this 1.2 patch now. Now when moving over to higher difficulties, make sure to visit the faction vendors from the factions to check out their faction gear and also to check out their augments that you can put on either your rings or your weapons or once you're revered with a faction, can even put on your armor. These alongside components and the resistances on the gear itself should help you out to fix your resistances for Elite and Ultimate, since you're gonna lose 25% to the top row when going from Normal to Elite, and 25% to the top and bottom row when going from Elite to Ultimate. Now when playing through Elite, you basically just want to like uh, get Devotion Points and only do Act 1 to 4. You can, if you want to, like also do a bit of like Act 5 or Act 7, that is fine, depending on like how you feel like when it comes to your character being ready for Ultimate. But other than that, you just want to like refarm the gear, like for example Zarathuzalan's Archive or the Cronle Incendiary Shoulder Plates. Now when it comes to the skill point location, you can see I picked up Flashbang. Flashbang reduces enemy defensive ability, making it easier for you to hit and crit enemies, and also applies a fumble and impaired aim debuff on enemies, which makes enemies miss their melee and ranged attacks with a certain percentage. In the Arcanist tree, you can see I pumped the bar a bit more, I got to the conversion node, which gives me insane C resistances, and also I maxed out the inner focus skill for offensive ability and percent spirit. Percent spirit scaling energy regeneration and also percent magical damage, so also fire and burn damage. On top of that, we have a one pointer in mental alacrity for casting speed, flat energy, as well as skill energy cost reduction. Now, if you didn't miss too many shrines, you should have actually all 55 shrines at the end of Elite already, which means you will have now your full endgame devotion page already at around level 70-ish. You can see here I did the following. So we have Chariot and Behemoth completed. I also picked up the Dryad skill on the right, which is a pretty nice active, which has like a heal and gives you more armor. I picked up Throne at the bottom for 5 purple, and then I retrieved basically respect and took out the notes from candle jackal 
all the ones in the crossroads except for the one on the red crossroads because now all these other devotions are like self-sustaining and then last but not least i got the torch devotion right the ulzun's torch is a tier 3 fire devotion which gives you like insane fire damage offensive ability and a decent meteor shower proc and this one is attached to flashbang now so once you have the ulzun's torch devotion you should grab the flashbang before you have this one I mean, Flashbang is always like still a nice debuff, but it's not really that important. The debuff is getting more important towards like ultimate and endgame. So I kind of would only start picking up Flashbang when you also have the Torch Devotion, because then you, you know, you have multiple reasons to actually use Flashbang. The Dryad is attached to Grenado, the Eldritch Fire is attached to Blackwater Cocktail, and the Magi's Volcanoes are attached to Thermite Mines. Now when it comes to your progression through ultimate, if you have prepared your character properly at the end of elite, then the early like acts of ultimate shouldn't be too hard either. As long as you have a belt with plus one all skills to diminishedness, the conflagration relic, the metal from Slavzar, the amulet from Vilgazor, the offhand from Zarthusadon, the shoulders from Kranis Gang, living rings, gargaboy rings or Golos rings in your ring slots, the Ugdenborg flame strife as a weapon, while exterior's chest from Melmoth as your chest piece, and a fettered mask from Elite or Ultimate, which gives you plus one to all skills that you can find near the Maw of Enough near the Corvin Sands Rift, as well as some pants from Hidden Path like Solar's Pants or Dreek Pants, then you should be totally fine going through Ultimate and pretty much destroying all the content. Skill point allocation for the Demolitionist Tree would look something like this, so you have still your Cocktail maxed out, your Grenado max out ideally all three nodes, but you're not gonna have enough points, so first node is the most important, then second, then third. You wanna max out your Thermite Mines by now because of the elemental resistance reduction, and Arcanus does not have any of that, so you need the Demolitionist to, uh, you know, like do the entire job on its own here. You wanna have a soft cap on Flame Touched, a one pointer in Temper, five points in Blast Shield at least, and also you actually want to have 50 points in a bar now and have Ulzin's Chosen maxed out. This is uh, insane for a Grenado. And then one pointers in Flashbang and Searing Light, as well as one pointers in Vindictive Flame and Ulzin's Wrath. On the Arcana side, you want to have a one pointer in an Iskandras and Amatna Exchange, 12 points in Overload, one point at least in Elemental Balance. You can put up to eight points here for a crit percent damage value, a one pointer in Mirror, a max out Maven Sphere of Protection, at least 6 points in Conversion for CC Resistances, 12 points in Inner Focus for Percent OA and Percent Spirit, 1 point in Arcane Will, 1 point in Nullification, 1 point in Mental Alacrity, as well as 9 points in Star Pact. Um, you might wonder why Star Pact and why not Reckless Power? Reckless Power is like percent fire damage, blah blah blah, right? Well, uh, the build is kind of like cooldown reduction based, honestly. Uh, especially Grenado benefits a lot from cooldown reduction, Cocktail a bit as well. Star Pack gives you a CDR, right? And up to 9 points is very efficient. Up to 9 points gives you 9%. After that, you get only 1% every 2 points that you put into the skill, which makes it obviously less efficient. So in the grand scheme of things, even though Reckless Power gives you percent fire damage and casting speed, I personally like Star Pack more in a build like this because it arguably gives you around the same damage while also giving you better uptime on your mirror skill and your nullification skill due to the cooldown reduction. Last but not least, you can also pick a one-pointer in Fabric of Reality for just like percent damage to Chthonians and Ethereals, but you can also skip it. It's not that important if you only get like, well, not that many points into it from gear.
Thank you so much for watching. Remember to check out and expand the description below for Grim Trolls links and related playlists. Shout out to all of my supporters on Patreon, YouTube and Twitch. Without you guys, this channel wouldn't even exist. If you are new to this channel and you like my content, feel free to like, subscribe and head over to my Patreon to support me. All of your support will be used to create more Grim Dawn guides on YouTube like this, as well as additional Grim Dawn content for the upcoming community seasons. If you haven't heard of or played a community season yet, you can do so at any point, even when it's offline, via the website grimdawnleak.com. I hope you enjoy the content, and I'll see you around on the next one.